Interpreter is an ubiquitous Erlang application that is widely available in a main Linux distribution. For that reason, we need to rely on the facto uh, build tool used by Linux and, uh, and FreeBSD packagers. That's why we use auto tool configure Mac uh, as a default way to build uh, eJabrd. However, it doesn't mean that eJabrd does not play well with standard uh, Erlang release mechanism approach. eJabrd is fully OTP and release compliant. It, uh, OTP is the standard uh, pattern to build Erlang application and release is a mechanism to deploy and autocode upgrade uh, Erlang application uh, that are going to be used in production. A release in Erlang is a standard way to prepare an application for deployment. It creates a self-contained standalone package containing the Erlang BeamVM, containing uh, various application and dependency that your application uh, rely upon. A release is also a way to uh, upgrade or downgrade if you want to roll back your code to, to upgrade a, a live system without an, any interruption. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to uh, build a JBRD, package release and uh, deploy it on a production environment. And I will also show you how to modify the code and prepare a new release for a live code upgrade of any JBRD uh, service, production service. To demonstrate this feature, I will rely on Elixir toolchain to prepare the release and prepare the upgrade. So I will rely on Mix and XRM uh, to prepare uh, all those things, all the package, and deploy them on production. I will show you how to do that right now. So let's start with the, with the demo. I assume that you have a Erlang install, at least uh, release Air uh, 18. Uh, I assume that you have Elixir install, at least with 1.05. So the first step to build uh, eJabrd with uh, Elixir Mix is that you, you will be checking out uh, eJabrd from, from source. So we get to, our, to a place where we uh, clone the eJabrd uh, repositories. We need to enter the command to get the dependency and compile all the software. So that's mix do depth get and then compile. So it will check the mix.ixs file and then check all the dependency that are needed for Jabbity. When this is done, it will build, uh, basically build everything. So everything is now now built. As you see, I have a, a few uh, deprecation uh, warning because uh, we're using uh, uh, the latest Erlang, but this is something that will be fixed in next uh, in next JWT release. So you can ignore that uh, that warning at the moment. So next step is to prepare the release. To prepare the release, you will simply issue the command mix release. The release is basically a standalone version of Erlang. A virtual machine, all the airline module needed to run in JBRD, all the dependency and all in JBRD, uh, compiled code. So it will basically build a standalone ready to deploy uh, version of uh, eJabrd package uh, under uh, airline OTP principle. So the release is uh, basically a directory which contains all uh, the needed stuff, the dependency, and that you can run on your server. But uh, be careful, you need to compile and prepare the release of a similar environment that the one we will be running on. So if you're deploying on Linux 64 bits, you will need to prepare uh, presumably on the same distribution, Linux distribution, and under the same architecture, so Linux. Uh, 64 bits to, to, to get uh, the binary uh, properly uh, compiled to target your uh, deployment environment. 
we, we have RepRepel released, and the next step is to deploy that release. So uh, the release mechanism prepare a compress file containing everything that you can copy and compress on your server and that you can use to launch Jeopardy. So we will not be uh, copying that to a server, we'll be just deploying into a different place on my laptop to show, to show the mechanism. So I create a deploy directory, uh, which is deploy Jeopardy, and I uncompress the release uh, in, in that uh, directory, basically. So, so that's, that's uncompressed. And now, from that release directory, I assume that the deploy directory is uh, on the server. From that deploy directory, I can uh, simply uh, launch a Jeopardy. Before launching a Jeopardy, what I need is that uh, I need to define a Jeopardy configuration file for my target environment. So I won't be editing uh, live uh, Jeopardy config file, but I have prepared one that uh, is a default one using uh, XMPP domain as localhost and, and everything, which is mostly okay for, for demonstration. And that I, I will be uh, downloading from my uh, gist uh, repository. So you can do the same, use the same one to, to experiment, no problem with that. And then I'm ready to launch uh, Jeopardy. So to do that, the first we will try launching Jeopardy from the, from the console. And as you see, I have an Jeopardy running with a default config file and I can connect with, uh, with a client. So let's try, uh, let's try to connect with a client. So as this is a stock Jeopardy deployment, there is no uh, user in the database. So what I will be doing is that I will use a Jeopardy OAT module to register a default user so that I can connect uh, from my client. So let me launch Psy. Let me try to get in line with that client. Uh, demo user. Psy is always using the vCard uh, if you don't have one. So I created one and I'm connected. And if, if you check Jeopardy uh, console, you see that uh, connection has been accepted and, uh, and I mean, I, I'm connected to the server. If you want to launch Jeopardy in a permanent way, what you can just do is, so let's stop Jeopardy from the console with init.stop. And then if you want to launch Jeopardy permanently uh, in the background, you can just use the command bin Jeopardy start instead of bin Jeopardy console and it will uh, make sure Jeopardy is launched in the background. So here is it, we have launched Jeopardy in the background. The next step, will be to demonstrate how I can upgrade live a release. So make change to the code, prepare a new release, deploy the new release to the server, and auto-code upgrade so that connected users are, are not uh, disconnected and can keep on chatting normally. So if I, if I get back to see, sorry, I've seen I've been disconnected when I stop uh, each already running from the console, I will get online once more to show that during the process that I will be uh, demonstrating now, I, I won't be disconnected. So let me, let me launch Safari. So when you connect to the HTTP bind endpoint, it's saying that this is an implementation for XMPP over Bosch and you need a client to, uh, that's supported to use it. And as you see, we're still mentioning the word HTTP bind here. So this is not very fancy. The sentence is coded in the code. What I will do is that I will be modifying uh, this to replace HTTP bind with uh, XMPP over Bosch and auto-grade uh, the eJabberry code to show the new, uh, the new wording. So let me do that. Let me edit the HTTP bind module. I will be looking for uh, the place where I mentioned HTTP bind and let me replace that by XMPP over Bosch. Like that, this, is, this looks much better. The second file I need to modify to demonstrate my, my purpose and prepare a new release is to uh, 
modify mix.exs to increase the relative number. So let me modify that file within mix.exs. I will be incrementing the relative number uh, uh, to uh, 15.7.1. So we are ready to build a new release. So let's compile a new code. Then let's prepare the new release. So I do, I'm doing again a uh, mixed release with the production environment. So we're ready. So we see that uh, the mixed release has generated the dot app up. This is a file that describes how to upgrade uh, the server when we will be launching the upgrade process. So everything seems created and ready to uh, uh, to be deployed, so I will be doing that. Uh, I'm copying, uh, I'm preparing uh, the release directory for that version. So I'm preparing the uh, 15.7.1 uh, directory in the release uh, environment on the server. So please bear in mind that deploy is supposed to be on the server, so we're supposed to perform the operation on the server. But for convenience, I'm doing the old operation on my laptop. Then let me uncompress the new release. Here we go. We are ready to upgrade uh, the server with a new release. So we do that with bin jabber command, upgrade, and the release uh, that we want to upgrade to. Let's do that. Please bear in mind that I assume jabber is already running. If your jabber is not really already running, you can just start the server again, and uh, we'll have uh, the proper release deployed. Let me do the live code upgrade, and the release has been unpacked. Uh, we have uh, uh, installed it uh, and uh, made the release permanent. So if I get to uh, Safari again, you should see that, if I reload the page, you see that uh, what we change in the code uh, has been properly uh, updated. And we should also see that the demo user, we don't have the pop-up saying we have been disconnected. So the demo user uh, stayed online and was able to chat all the time during the upgrade. So it was completely transparent for the user. So this, uh, this concludes our demo. Uh, please bear in mind that not all release are as simple. Uh, if you upgrade state, you have all the place in the code to change uh, to let JavaD know how to upgrade uh, the in-memory state during the release process. So I hope this tutorial got you familiar with Erlang release mechanism and is useful for your own project, either in Erlang or in Elixir. So what you need to remind is that eJabrd is uh, compliant with the build process needed and required by Linux distribution. It is also compliant uh, with Erlang OTP. It is also fully compliant with Erlang release mechanism. So I hope you liked this video. You can subscribe to Prof. One Video. I plan to do more video uh, on that style, and you can uh, like this video to uh, to show that uh, you appreciate our work.